Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. And the message for today is crisis, Jacob's trouble. And I'm going to read a little story. This is a quick synopsis of what's going on with David's son, Absalom. David was in a crisis. How many of you are in a crisis right now? How many of you have dealt with a crisis this week? Mm-hmm. Well, it's what we're going to deal with today. And we're going to show how God deals with some things, how we are to deal with some things, how our tendencies are. You know what crisis brings up? Sometimes it makes Jack jump out the box. You know how that goes. But anyway, we're going to deal with it with David and Absalom right now. The story of Absalom. This is from Learn Religious. The Bible says Absalom was praised as the most handsome man in all Israel. He was flawless from head to foot. <laughs> all right. When he cut his hair once a year, only because it became too heavy, it weighed five pounds. It seemed everyone loved him. Absalom had a beautiful sister named Tamar, who was a virgin. Another of David's sons was Amnon, was their half-brother. Amnon fell in love with Tamar, raped her, then rejected her in disgrace. For two years, Absalom kept silent, sheltering Tamar in his house. He had expected his father, David, to punish Amnon for his act. When David did nothing, Absalom's rage and anger seethed into a vengeful plot. Well, one day, Absalom invited all the king's sons to a sheep shearing festival. When Ammon was celebrating, Absalom ordered his soldiers to kill. After the assassination, Absalom fled to Gersher, northeast of the Sea of Galilee, to the house of his grandfather. He did there, he stayed there for three years. David missed his son deeply. The Bible says in 2 Samuel 13, 37, that David mourned for his son day after day. Finally, David allowed him to come back to Jerusalem. Gradually, Absalom began to undermine King David. Any of you feel like people are undermining you? Any of you feel like the enemy is undermining you? undermining your purpose, undermining your calling, undermining your assignments, your God-given assignments, undermining your progress. Well, a lot of us go through that, especially the way the demons are bouncing off the, the rafters today. All right. Gradually, Absalom began to undermine King David, usurping his authority and speaking against him to the people. Under the pretense of honoring a vow, Absalom went to Hebron and began to gather an army. He sent messengers throughout the land proclaiming his kingship. When King David learned of the rebellion, he and his fellow his followers fled Jerusalem. Fled. Ain't that something? The king fled. Meanwhile, Absalom took advice from his counselors on the best way to defeat his father before the battle. David ordered his troops not to harm Absalom. The two armies clashed at Ephraim in a large oak forest. 20,000 men fell that day. The army of David prevailed. Y'all be careful who you rise up against. If you rise up against the people of God, the man of God, the woman of God, a child of God, you rise up against them, God will slap you down. You better watch it. Moving right along. As Absalom was riding his mule under a tree, and here's a perfect example of what I just said. So some of you who have enemies that are coming at you, watch. What does God say? Your enemy comes one way, he'll send him flying seven ways. As Absalom was riding his mule under a tree, his hair his pride and joy, y'all, his hair got entangled in the branches. The mule ran off, leaving Absalom hanging in the air, helpless. Joab, one of David's generals, 
took three javelins and thrust them into Absalom's heart. Then ten of Joab's army, armor bearers, circled Absalom and killed him. Now listen to this. Listen to this. This is what happens. Some of you think you don't know what you're going to do about your enemies. You are at your wit's end. This man's pride and joy was his hair. Five pounds of it. That's some hair, y'all. That's a lot of hair. I do weaves. I know that's a lot of hair. I wouldn't put five pounds on anybody's head. They'd end up with whiplash, trying to hold their head up. But listen to this. The very thing that set him apart in his beauty, in his in his his splendor was the very thing God used to kill him. See, some of you in the world today who are finding it a pleasure to attack God's people, you you find it very enjoyable to bring God's people down, to fire them from their jobs, to not the rug out from under them to make them look like a fool in public. And you use your gifts, you use your strength, you use your attributes to tear someone else down. God will use your attributes that you're using against his people. He'll, ch he'll give a, a chokehold on you if you're not careful. The very thing that has raised you up high will be the very thing God will use to tear you down. Be very careful. God says in his word, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Be very careful about that. Because when you mess with, with God's people, you're messing with God. And I'm not only saying that to witches and warlocks and family members and enemies and foes. I'm saying that to the government of all the nations, all these government heads, all these, these leaders. Wickedness is in high places, y'all. And some of y'all are, are delving into it big time, head first. And you enjoy the power that, that Satan has given you. But what you forget to acknowledge is that God is way more powerful. He's the one that created Satan in the first place to do his dirty work. Y'all be very careful because God will, will use that boomerang it back on you and slice your head off. He'll hit you where it hurts. All right, that's your warning. Mm -hmm.